In this video, we will explore one of the oldest cold connection techniques in jewelry making, riveting. There are five secrets to perfect rivets every time. Let's discover the secrets so you can be riveting your jewelry projects perfectly every time. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. The first secret is choosing the rivet type. There are two basic rivet types. One, solid wires. These can be pre-made or custom made using wires of different gauges and metals. Here are some examples of solid wire rivets. The second rivet type is tubing. Again, these can be pre-made rivets or they can be custom made out of different sizes of tubing and different materials. Here's some examples of tubing rivets. I've included a couple pop rivets in these examples, but we will not be discussing pop rivets in this video. The second secret to perfect rivets is drilling a tight fitting hole. Measure your rivet diameter with calipers or a micrometer, then find the matching drill bit size. If you don't have the exact fit, choose the drill bit that is smaller than your rivet diameter and rotate your drill bit or ream out the hole with a scraper to fit the rivet size. It's best to scrape out any burrs or file the burrs off before you insert the rivets. Once you have your project laid out for where you want the holes to be drilled, you should be center punching them. You can use an automatic center punch or an alternative is to use a burr. Lube up the burr and then put a slight indentation where you want to drill. This will not work hard in the metal where the center punch will work hard in the metal and it will make your drill bits last a little bit longer. Lube up your drill bits and then you're ready to go ahead and drill your holes. It's always good to use a burr life or some kind of lubrication on your drills. They'll last a lot longer. Then make sure that you scrape it out and make sure that the rivet fits nice and snug. This is a pre-made rivet. Slides in there really nice. Spend the extra time on this secret to get a tight fitting hole. This is a must and will make or break a good rivet job. The third secret is correct length of rivet. A rule of thumb is the rivet total length should be two millimeters longer than the thickness of the metal being riveted, either sheet or forged wire. That is one millimeter longer on each end of the rivet, unless it's a pre-made rivet with a head on it. Then just cut the rivet one millimeter longer. What is the best way to cut the rivets? One is using flush cut wire cutters. These cutters are used for small gauge wire only. Measure your wire and then cut with the flat part of the flush cutters. A good secret here is to put your finger at the end of the wire, cut it, and it won't fly around the studio, and then it'll stay right on the tip of your finger and you're ready to go. Or two, the jeweler's saw frame is your go-to all-around cutting tool. This can be used on wires or tubing. Small wires can be a problem to hold them when you're cutting them. I like to stick them into a hole on the side of the bench pin, lube up the jeweler's saw blade, and then start cutting them. This will hold them in position for you and they won't move around. It's a nice little secret. Works out really, really well. Then you cut them off and then you're ready to file them. A nice little trick is to hold them in a tweezers, put them in a cut hole into your bench pin, and then go ahead and file them off flat. Taking it right down to your mark and you're ready to insert them into the sheet. Another way to cut them is using a tube and wire cutting jig. This has a handle and a groove in here to put your tubing and your wire in. It will slide back and forth for pre-cut measurements and tighten it up 
and then simply slide your tubing into the little wedge, hold it down with the handle, and I like to put it in the bench vise. This holds it really very well. Go ahead and take your jeweler saw, stick it into one of the grooves for you. You can lube it up also and then saw it. When you're done sawing, simply take the piece of tubing out and you're ready to go with your rivet. The fourth secret is good support for the rivet. Use a bench block, anvil, or other solid surface. Avoid using wooden blocks. The fifth secret is hammer choice. There are several hammers to use in riveting. We can use a riveting hammer, cross-peen hammer, ball-peen hammer, flat-peen hammer, a planishing hammer. Let's take a look at some of those that you can use for riveting. The different peens on the hammers will leave different marks. This is a planishing hammer or flat peen, a cross peen, and a ball peen. Now that we have discovered the five secrets to perfect riveting, let's put those secrets to work and do some riveting. Start off by riveting solid wire rivets. I pre-drilled the two discs now let's check for a nice tight fit. Then slide it into the second piece. Turn it over and we're ready to mark it for our approximately one millimeter on the back side. Just eyeball this, you don't have to take a ruler to it. Just eyeball it, and then you're ready to cut it, file it, and then reinsert it. And then you can double check the length. Flip it over and double check your length, and just see if it's the right size. This one is a little bit long, so let's go ahead and file it down a bit. You don't want to end up with too much on your rivet for the length it will have a tendency to bend over and not just mushroom out. So now we're ready to hammer it with the ball peen hammer and we'll go around the edges of the rivet and start mushrooming it out. So just go around the outside edges of the rivet and then you can start hammering more in the middle of the rivet. This will push the metal out evenly in all directions. And then go ahead with your ball peen and go around the edges a little bit more, flare it out and mushroom it out. Go evenly all the way around. And because it is a pre-made, we don't need to flip it over. Then you can use your planishing hammer with the slightly domed head, planish it down nice and tight, and it will turn out nice and smooth and ready to go. Because we worked on a hard surface, it will flatten that pre-made side. So be aware of that. So nice and smooth and tight, and you're ready to go. Now let's use a large sterling silver custom rivet to hold the two discs together. Take the ball peen hammer and go around the edges flaring and mushrooming the rivet out. We have it on the spacer, so we have a little extra space on the back so it doesn't flatten the rivet. Now we can go ahead and mushroom the back of the rivet. Do a little bit at a time, and then go ahead and flip it on over. You can see that the spacer has made sure that the rivet did not flatten. Now we'll go ahead and hammer with the ball peen hammer to finish spreading and mushrooming the rivet. Now we can take the planishing hammer and smooth and tighten the rivet. We'll keep it on the spacer and then we'll remove the spacer and put the discs directly on the anvil. Give it some taps from the front and then flip it over and do it on the back. This will tighten and smooth the rivet. 
a couple more taps from the front to smooth and even it out. And there you have your nice custom sterling silver rivet. Let's take some smaller rivets and rivet a couple pieces together. I have a pre-made rivet and a silver custom cut. The pre-made one I've already cut and measured. And because it is smaller, we don't really need to use the ball peen end. So go right ahead with your planishing hammer or any other flat hammer and start hammering it down nice and snug. And you're all set with that one. If you're using a straight rivet wire, put a spacer in between the block and the back piece of the metal. This will help keep the one millimeter length nice and straight. Keep your metal straight up and down, hammer lightly on one side, and then go ahead and flip it over and repeat the process. This will help keep the custom wire from bending over and getting too long. It'll keep it even on both sides. So tap it a little bit on each side, keep flipping it back and forth, and you'll notice that I am using the planishing hammer with the slightly flat head. I don't really need the ball peen or a cross peen hammer on the smaller rivets. Once it's started to get tight, I go ahead and remove the spacer and go ahead and hammer it on both sides, nice and smooth. And that will tighten that rivet up and make it real nice and flat and good looking. Here they are, the two of them together, and you'll notice that small dimple on the pre-made one, so you can file or round that off if you wish. Now let's take a look at how to rivet custom tube rivets. The tools that we can use for the tubing rivets are either a center punch or you can use a dapping tool or a repose tool. I've already pre-drilled the holes in the discs, inserted the tubing, and set it on the spacer. Give it a few taps and this will start flaring the tubing. We'll turn it on over and we'll do a couple taps from the back side. And that spacer really holds it up and keeps it from flattening that tube. Give it a couple more taps from the back and this will start flaring the back end of the tube also. We'll flip it around, we'll keep it on that spacer, give it a few more taps with the tool and this starts a real nice flare. We'll move the spacer out of the way, flip it on over, and give it one more tap with the dapping tool. And this will flare that out and make it nice and tight in the hole. You'll notice that it is slightly crooked there, but that's okay. This will happen. And you simply take your planishing hammer and give it a tap down. This will make it nice and tight onto the discs. We'll flip it on over and do some from the back also. Give it a couple little taps. And then flip it on over and give it a couple little tiny taps and this will tighten up that rivet really nice. And you're all set, ready to go. Rivets can be used in many different ways. Let's do something fun with some discs, some tubing, a preformed rivet, and let's put them together and use tubing as a spacer between the discs. And let's stack them up. And all of a sudden, when you do that and you rivet them together, you have a three-dimensional form. Let's take a look at that. As you can see, rivets are very exciting and there's so many different ways that you can use them. You can use them for decoration and also to cold connect your parts on your jewelry. I hope that you've enjoyed these five secrets of perfect riveting every time and you'll use these in your jewelry projects. Feel free to comment or send me any questions that you wish. I really enjoy your comments and questions. 
If you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do and ring that bell to get those notifications for new videos. I'm Greg Greenwood. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.